What's up, everybody? Welcome to the table. We're going to have a conversation today about Jesus, how we follow him, and how we make a difference in our world today. Yeah, that's great. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, if that intro is a little different than normal, it's because we're doing something a little bit different today. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're flipping the mic, and we've asked Jeff Gowing to uh, be a part of our studio and uh, he's going to be asking Khalil and I questions. This is Sean Silveri, this by is the Khalil. way. And uh, he's he's come up from Florence, and you may have heard him in uh, some different podcasts. We've got him in the studio uh, with us today. So, Jeff, why don't you just tell us what is one thing that our listeners absolutely need to know about you? They must. They must know this. This is they, essential. It's essential. It's essential. I love it. I think I th- essential. I would say that they have to know that I take personal grooming very oh, seriously. Your beard. I have a is beard. On point right if you now. don't, know, you can't see it, but I have a beard, and I just I take I take pride in actually can't look at anything but your beard. Right now. <laughs> I've kept in that in that area, so that's that's really important. The beard is mesmerizing. <laughs> that's amazing. So you're a youth pastor in Florence, Oregon. Six years you've been there, and um, it's been. Uh, a good six, great church, great lead pastor, great team, and uh, you've got a wife and a mm-hmm. child. Yeah, which means you're a dad. Yeah, that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. It's crazy how that that stuff works. Yeah, but yeah, all right, guys, you ready to I, hop into the the questions? Kind of the hot seat. We're a little nervous. Yeah, but it's yes. weird being on this side of it, but it is weird. All right, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna <clears throat> start things off. A little slow. I love movies. If you don't know, I, d- I think they're amazing. Um, mm. They're amazing, just gifts to us. And so I want to ask you guys a question of what is the last movie that made you cry? Mm. Okay, so I'll start it out because Quill doesn't yeah. cry. I don't. And uh, I don't really impervious. either. The last movie and all of our listeners who have watched this movie will know I cried in Avengers Endgame. Which I, part? Which well, well not if I'm gonna much, spoil but. it, if I'm gonna spoil it, it was toward the end. Okay, there. I understand. With Iron Man, and I don't, I don't know if I even have to say any more than that. You if you have haven't to. watched it or you don't care to watch it, that's okay. It won't be spoiler, but and people who haven't will go, what happened? Yeah, and then they'll wanna, yeah, wanna they'll wanna know. check it out if you haven't. Hey, yet. thanks a lot, Disney, for sponsoring. Uh, <laughs> 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 yes. Oh man, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Jokes. Okay, for me, I don't, I can't think of the last movie I cried at, but the one that I cried at, I cried um, on many times, and to this day, I still get choked up. Is Gladiator? Mm, uh, so to good. to right at right near the end. That that movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. Cinematic masterpiece, and. <laughs> so uh, <good. laughs> And I don't want to say anything because, and I, I want to go on record right now, just go watch it. Everyone yeah. should watch it. Yeah. 1999 or 2000. 2000, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Great, great so movie. There's a Russell Crowe. A lot of those young bucks who are listening that maybe have never seen it, they need to. Yeah, deep cut, guys. Go after it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's really good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we are on the other side of the the COVID-19 outbreak all that stuff and, and so i want to mm. ask you guys if you could create a covid season sport <laughs> what would it be <laughs> this is such a good question my my first thought was tag <laughs> 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 sorry that was the first thing that came into my mind no it's so bad we've got uh mr colin meyer in studio yeah. and he helps us produce this podcast we don't mention him much but uh he deserves so much he deserves, so he much. He deserves a, a lot shout. of credit hey, can and we, a we shout just out. give a round of applause let's do and that to call you're Meyer. listening right now please mr call meyer and uh he he about lost it there on that uh that tag comment so <laughs> uh thank you colin for always helping us behind the scenes i think the it would have to be a like a virtual scavenger hunt i don't know and this is and i was not that it's not that funny or anything but my son my oldest son micah did a virtual scavenger hunt mm-hmm. with his preschool because he couldn't finish out the year and and he had a blast and i had a blast watching him so that's probably what i would do where there's the teacher or the person who's running the game will or the scavenger hunt will say random stuff that you have to find in your house in the first person to get in front of the screen 
mm. uh, wins that round or whatever. So Those are cool. Yeah. I That's think I mine go. mine would be uh, uh, as a, as a pastor I saw so much of this happen is the uh the race to 100 subscribers on YouTube. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. many, so many yes. ministry leaders like like my follow subscribe yeah. follow, we, we follow need it, we need follow. the custom we need our URL. <laughs> yeah. So hey, hey. that would Guilty. that would definitely be my uh, my covid sport. <laughs> <laughs> the 100 yeah. subscriber race. <laughs> yeah, that is so awesome. funny. The, so race the great race or the What's the what's the other the one? Amazing race. The amazing race. Yeah, yeah like uh, the you can have race. assists for subscribers. Oh man, look at <laughs> Khalil Burton with the with the save. He comes in to dish and assist for a subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Things are so heating awesome. up. I love Things that. Are <laughs> That's so oh my gosh! So Khalil, would it be just tag, or is there something else? I don't even want to. Re- I don't want this to be held against me. So I'm just gonna <laughs> say, "Hey Jeff, what's next?" <laughs> <laughs> awesome guys! All right. Well, something that I've been pondering and, and just thinking about recently um, is is the lost art of spiritual lament, um, mm. and that's a word that's that's lost in our vocabulary. We don't talk about it talk about it a ton but i i want to ask you guys how do we re-infuse into our practice as followers of jesus just the beauty of lament and first if you guys want to maybe define it or ask me to define it, that's I fine i was just about to say you know that's mm-hmm. lament is is a i was gonna say it's a big word but yeah you, you feel is. the weight around it but maybe you don't some don't even know what it means so when you think about lament i mean what are you thinking jeff so i think i think a a deep physical and spiritual sorrow mm-hmm. for the brokenness dysfunction yeah. and disarray in culture around you mm. yeah both that that can be that can be within your home that can be within your society your city your your race and and so it's found yeah anyway so that's what i would say it would be is a is a deep spiritual and physical brokenness Just grief yeah it's, sorrow it's good because it's an ancient term much like the term covenant that we can't really describe in one sense but to utilize the term of deep a deep grief is about as best as you could get in my opinion, Mm -hmm. uh, to describe lament because you almost, there's almost not an image for it because like similar to covenant, you know, there's the image of marriage Mm -hmm. and, um, some of those things. And so it's a really important ancient word that we need to probably dig up a little bit, um, because we can, we can kind of avoid it unintentionally, maybe even. Oh yeah. Well, when you threw me off a little bit, Jeff, when you said basically the art of lament, mm-hmm. because right now, right. Would you say that grief and sorrow is something anyone would consider art or something to, I don't know. Art is something to be appreciated, I think. Yeah. And you're, you know, so the term, when I think culturally we try to avoid, avoid hurt, pain, suffering, sorrow, grief. If, if there is, uh, challenge that produces that kind of emotion or deep feeling within me, how quickly can I push it aside or get on the other side of it or get onto something else? I even see that with people's jobs. Um, get into a new job, enjoy the job, but then it starts getting difficult and then it's like onto the next. When So I see a cultural value of actually avoiding suffering because it seems to get in the way of happiness. So that's why that term art, I agree with it, but I think it hits the cultural narrative really different. Yeah. I mean, I even think of not to interrupt or anything, but even the, the younger generation, not, well, I guess I would consider myself still in one of the younger generations, <laughs> but when things that are difficult when it comes to college or school or, or, uh, anything like that, the de facto is to, or the default is to quit. Yeah. Mm. When, in fact, leaning into those difficulties develops deep roots and develops a character within you that you would not have achieved had you not leaned into that difficulty. And the art of lamenting is a very important factor in that as Mm -hmm. well. Not to dismiss 
hurt or pain or, or grief or dismiss those feelings, but to actually even lean into some of those things. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's good. So, so we're, you said there wasn't really an image for it. And as you said that, I got an image for it. <laughs> so I love it. It's great. Maybe we could do this a little bit. Like, what are some images of lamenting in the scripture? So mm-hmm. the first picture I thought of, I actually thought of uh, the book of Jonah and the judgment being proclaimed on the city of Nineveh and then the tearing of clothes and the, sa- right. the sackcloth and ashes and people sitting in that, like the tearing of their clothes in just extreme grief and acknowledgement of that that position in that situation right could be connected to a lament i'm glad you mentioned that because to to clarify i meant a current day image mm-hmm. but yes we right. always want to go back to the scriptures and and absolutely that sackcloth and ashes up on our heads and things like that in the scriptures jeff do you what uh images come to your mind like modern day uh yeah either way yeah, modern whatever. modern day maybe even in the scriptures or well, I, I, I just see in the scriptures, I, I look at Jesus and yeah. his compassion for mm-hmm. for people drove him to, to, to act more mm-hmm. than just feeling bad and having sympathy. And that's where I think I'm going to we, we can get to this a little later. But I think how do we respond? Because lament is mm-hmm. more than just a pity party where we just sit yeah. in mm-hmm. uh, passivity towards injustice, towards brokenness. We, we pause in it and we sit in it. And, and I see Jesus. But we also act. We we, we go to action right. after that. And I see Jesus um, both looking over Jerusalem and crying mm-hmm. and weeping and saying, you know, oh, that, that you would that I would that I would gather you yeah, and that you would come to me wing, and like yeah. lamenting over the lostness of of Jerusalem and yeah. and their their defiance. Yeah, really. And you go to Jesus and in I think it's John 11 where Lazarus is dead. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jesus knows he knows in some respect that he is able to raise him from the dead. And yet he sits in the grief with so good and then acts upon, you know, he, he it's, it's like empathizing on a grander scale, like entering into the grief, even of someone else and not even, maybe not even our own grief, but someone else's grief Um, here recently in Albany, Oregon, where we are, uh, where we record and, and where Khalil pastors at a pastor's wife uh, passed away very suddenly. Mm-hmm. And there is a, uh, there's a lamenting that's taking place over the last couple of weeks within our entire community because the church and the lead pastor and he and his wife, they're such great people. They've done such great yeah. things for this Valley that they've, they've really, it's caused the whole city to, lament and enter into that grief and to empathize and that would be actually a really current day image maybe even of just death yeah and when we think about lament i know we still haven't answered the first question (laughs) it's great but i think it's great that we're we're kind of trying to define what we're talking about here there's so many different reasons to lament or to grieve or to express an extreme sorrow I think, uh, you know, we can lament over our own brokenness and our, our sinful nature and our sinful state, recognizing we're not, you know, in a right uh, position with God uh, apart from him. We, we can we can express extreme grief or sorrow at the different elements of brokenness in our world. Right. We recognize that though our world is broken. It's fading away and we see hurt and pain and suffering and injustices all around us. And there's reasons to, to lament at that it's the opposite of god's desire for our world and um i just think of the many different reasons that we can lament in which you again will i guess we'll come back to later as you said but there's a response to those different versions of lamenting isaiah 53 uh, verse 3 even talks about this a little bit when you use the definition sorrow Speaking of the Messiah, it says he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and he wasn't esteemed by anyone. So, you know, we you use G- Jesus as an example, Sean, too, that, yeah. you know, when I think about lamenting, I would even say this is an emotion that Jesus expresses and demonstrates. It actually defines him in some way and how he sees the brokenness of our world and therefore 
as followers of Jesus who are attached to him and living in this world, understanding his purposes, we have reason to, to lament like him. Right. Well, and even right there, Khalil, just to hop in is like in, in Isaiah 53, three in whom men hide their faces from. Mm. Isn't that just the definition of us that we don't like to lament? We don't like mm. to sit in the place of sorrow or when mm. people are even sorrowful. Like we go to Romans 12, rejoice with those that rejoice and weep right. with those that would weep. We're really good at rejoicing. I'm great at the rejoicing part. I'm yeah. great at the celebration part. I'm yeah. great at like, invite me to all the parties. Let's go. Um, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. But I'm really, uh, I struggle with, and that's what God is dealing with me. And I wanted to, to turn it to you. How do we turn towards people in sorrow? How do we l- lament? Yeah. Mm. I think initially, and now that we've kind of defined this a little bit and where we, I think it's listening well, even if the person who is in grief is it's, it's a, something that you don't necessarily even agree with. Like I'm with you. Like I, I'm kind of a, Hey dude, suck it up. Let's go. When Mm -hmm. my wife is kind of the opposite, she's really good at lamenting and sitting, sitting in, soaking, taking it all in. At every level, we need to be better listeners, period. Whether it's yeah. with something different than lamenting or a, a death or, a, a, man, this is really difficult for me, whatever this may be. It may not be a big deal to me as Sean Silveri, but it's a very big deal to this individual or friend or person. I need to listen well in order to enter in, if that makes sense. I need to listen well in order to enter in. And so that put that means putting aside my preconceived notions or or my uh, assumptions or expectations and just asking really good questions and listening to the response of those individuals now that's obviously on a on a level of somebody else that's grieving mm-hmm. that we need to grieve with them yeah um i don't know what Khalil your thoughts on on that oh, might be but no, that's great i would I want to kind of turn to personal lamentation yeah. in a minute, but as we've we've touched on, Jesus is Jesus is the epitome of what it means to abide with people um, and to be present with people. And when we see Jesus, we're seeing the exact nature and character and the fullness of the expression of God in person, which we then are invited to walk in the same manner. So He mm-hmm. weeps with those who weeps who weep you we see that with the Lazarus scenario there's grieving there's crying for those who are suffering or rejected um, or despised he, he goes into their home he he walks with them True. there's this coming alongside of and, and supporting spiritually emotionally and, and personally so I would just affirm that um, and looking at the life of Jesus I think we see that that is that is absolutely the right response personally when I think of lamenting, it's not something that I necessarily like to do either. I I tend to be uh, just keep going, keep moving kind of person. So, yeah. and then eventually it'll catch up to me, and and it'll take place. But I, I was thinking about, the, yeah, while you were talking, just thinking about lamenting, and thinking about the emotions that come with lament, or to use another word, grief. So there's a whole book in the Bible about lamenting it's called lamentations and it's literally lamenting over the destruction of israel (laughs) by god's hand and it's this this recognizing that it's happening because of the 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 state of the people it's god god actively doing it They, they they don't complain that god is doing it he's righteous in doing so but there's still a a sadness and a a grief and a even there's there's a worry in limitations. I see that maybe God won't even restore them, and there's there's just a lot of emotion in there. So what came to my mind, and I know I'm rambling here a little bit, but the passage that says "Be angry and do not sin," mm-hmm. uh, you can you can have you can be angry, but we also have to guard our heart from sin. So in looking at this, I'm thinking of the full range of human emotion that exists in our lamenting and in our processing of grief. There is sadness, there is hurt sometimes, there is mourning, but then sometimes anger arises, right? And what I love about that passage is it reminds me we can we can experience that full range of emotions, but do not sin in that. And I recently heard this from someone else. 
um, I think it was Timothy Mackey actually, but he was talking about the Psalms and the value of the Psalm is that it shows us the full gamut of human emotions and how we can process them in the presence of God without sinning. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about lamenting, you might even turn to the Psalms to look towards the full range of emotions that can be processed and how to process through those. Something I see in there is from David and the psalmist is recognizing current positions. Sometimes there's worry, there's fear, there's anxiety. There can be depression expressed. Sometimes there's even anger or a questioning of God, why this is happening. But in the end, there's always a worship of God. It's almost like a nevertheless, you know, man, I'm going through this. I'm experiencing this. Why? How? What are you going to do? Are you going to show up, God? What's going to happen? Nevertheless, you're worthy of worship. You're worthy of praise. It's this, I'm not God. And because of what I'm going through, it it reminds me that I'm not God. I'm limited. I'm finite. I, I can't process all this. So in our lamenting, in our grief, in our feelings, we can acknowledge them wholly and completely. But I think I think in some way those emotions are meant to lead us closer to God. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right? right. To give us a greater understanding of who he is. And so the psalmist demonstrates that in that those emotions draw him into the presence of God. Yeah. And actually lamenting is a an art that um, is actually creating within us the people that we were meant to be, that Jesus has created us to be, that God has created us to be. And so it's actually a very intricate piece to that, to uh, what I would call transfiguration or Mm. morphing into the the person that I was meant to become from the very dawn of the the age, Genesis 1 and 2, that we were meant to be this uh, person that mirrors almost, obviously with our own personalities and distinctions, but mirrors Jesus and who he who he is and uh, what he accomplished him. Uh, David Hurtwick and others have said that that the the gospel is bad news before it's good news. Mm -hmm. And so do I actually lean into that, that I am a broken, flawed individual at my at my core? Well, at the same time, I am an image bearer of creator God, which is really good. And so am I actually grieved by my own sin, shortcomings, my, my flaws, and um, my brokenness? Or do I excuse those things and go right past them mm-hmm. without thinking twice about them? Or <laughs> a third option, am I just p- under a pile of shame and guilt because I am somebody who is flawed and have shortcomings and the sin that uh, continues to pull me away from the image of God and what he has for me. And so to enter into grief and lamentation is um, in fact a helpful um, way to fight against shame, guilt, uh, shortcomings, and, and allowing those shortcomings to overwhelm me. And uh, so I know that might be a little, you know, um, kind of a little off track, but, you know, to lament actually is really important uh, on a personal level that it actually draws me closer to Jesus, as Khalil said, and it helps me fight against sin. Yeah, you definitely know? cracks the uh, the outward veneer of perfection that we often place on ourselves, mm-hmm. either, yeah. you know, um, trying to throw filters on our brokenness or to ignore right. these th- to ignore the suffering these, either yeah. happening around us or even happening in us like these these harsh realities and so it just kind of cracks that open and allows us to see again there's I call it an art form of lament I said that because it's beautiful yeah mm-hmm. it really is yeah it's beautiful that out of this brokenness and out of this hardship and the suffering and and out of sin we can be restored yeah, we can be restored. Mm-hmm. The restoration and piece. The, the restoration piece of that's good. of the gospel and and the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, that's and, really good. That's right. And what you said, Sean, about the gospel is bad news before it's good news. Bring bringing us to the good news at some point, but mm-hmm. our lamenting, our need for lament, our need for grief, the fact that we experience extreme sorrow, is because of the sin in our world. 
-hmm. It's because of the brokenness, both within ourselves and with those around us, the brokenness between the relationship between us and creation and God. And, you know, when we look at our world, I think a biblical worldview helps us to process that um, right. because, you know, with injustices and broken families and the things we see in our world, we go, how, why, what? Right. I don't understand. But from a biblical worldview, we do understand it's because of the broken relationship between us and God. And this world, as we know it right now, is it's fading away. It's it's dying. And that is that isn't good news. Mm -mm. The good news, though, is that God is at work, that he's brought salvation for all who would draw near to him and that there is a second coming where he will make all wrongs right. He will restore earth as it was always meant to be in the garden of Eden. And there's the good news. Right. And so I just back to the Psalms and our scripture and our biblical worldview. I think that can, we can use, we can allow scripture to help shape our lament mm -hmm. and I just, in my processing, I really draw off of that model that uh, David exhibits where express the full range of emotions, yeah. acknowledge them. God can handle them. Y y let the Psalms show you how you can do that. And then let them also show you that at the end, it should lead us to a worship of God, um, a closer relationship to him in the midst and a more of a dependence on him. So um, that's kind of how I process whenever I'm grieving or I'm praying with God, I do come back to acknowledging who he is mm -hmm. and that puts things in perspective, you know? Yeah. I don't know if that's originally what you were getting at even, but I think the conversation is just kind of led us to this place and it's, and it's awesome. So yeah. Yeah. what, what about, I mean, what about you? Any perspective that you have on this that we kind of haven't touched on or you just see from another angle? I, I I would I would say all, all that you guys are saying has has been right on and and I feel a similar expression of that. I I think where I the the tension for me is this this wrestling between being passive and then how do we act out of lament more than just feelings but action um, mm -hmm. and not acting so much out of our feelings because mm -hmm. sometimes that can be in in a like that's who we are. But I know that when I interact out of emotion, most of the time it doesn't go well um, as a married, yeah. as a married person, <laughs> as um, in, in my relationships, when I, when I let emotions lead, it doesn't go well. So I, I guess I'm trying to discover yeah. how get really practical. Where, yeah. It. Where's the action come in more than just the sitting in the, in the stillness and oh, the reflection. It's a great question. Yeah. And I had uh, a couple of thoughts that just left me, but one is, do we actually sit in silence and allow the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives? So yeah. getting really practical, do we set aside time within our weeks to sit and be still? To Khalil's point earlier, to really all three of us have said this, we're go, 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 next thing. I'm going to push through. I'm going to push yeah. past this. And so it's very countercultural, especially in the Western uh, world, to just sit in stillness. Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heavens, I'll be exalted among the earth. And then verse 11 is really good too, but I can't remember it right now. That we would just sit in stillness and and allow the Spirit of God to do deep work in us. What I have found is... Oftentimes, brokenness in myself is revealed, so I need to ask for forgiveness to somebody. I need to reach out to someone and see how they are doing and then sit in silence with them. I look at the, the, the book of Job, the, the character in the scriptures. The one thing that his friends did that was good, the pretty much the only <laughs> thing, is they sat with him mm -hmm. in sackcloth and ashes and didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. When they so, started saying words, they started saying <laughs> the When they things. started saying words, and to Jeff's point, you know, the how feelings can easily mislead us and misguide us, that's where the problem came. And mm. so so a, and another practical piece of that is to sit in silence and cry with one another. Uh, maybe you don't cry. I'm not a huge crier, like I said it. But you just sit 
with that individual, the power of presence. Yeah. That is a big uh, piece to the art of lament. The, 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 the person, it, maybe it's you, maybe you're the one that's lamenting. So it's a phone call to a friend and it's saying, Hey, can you come over? Can you just sit with me? Can we just sit on my couch or on my back deck and I'm going to brew some coffee or whatever and just sit with me. I just mm-hmm. need, you know, that, that, that connection piece and community, how we are all on mission together. We are a people that are on mission with Jesus together. And I just need presence. You know, I need that power of presence and to be bold enough to do that. Yeah. You know, and say, you know what, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm confident and I want to, I, I want to act this out. I want somebody with me or I need to be with someone. That's so good. Cause it's, it's uh it's, it's both ways. One, I need to be bold enough to ask to right. invite people into my, into my sorrow, into that, like mm-hmm. not, not hide it, not just be in isolation. Yeah. Um, yeah. To invite people, but also when we're being invited into that space of not trying to fix it mm-hmm. yeah. right away, just yeah. sitting. And, and again, you, you said it, Sean earlier is that when we sit in silence, and we look to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us mm-hmm. the action mm-hmm. that will glorify God and, and that will, again, bring a, about bring about a, a greater picture of who Jesus is yeah. in the gospel. Certainly. No, it's so great. And when I, th- I think about, you know, when we do sit with people, when I do, I tend to want to speak quicker than I should. Yeah. And if I'm honest, it's probably just because it's uncomfortable for me. Definitely. Someone else is yeah. grieving. Someone else is hurting. And it's just uncomfortable to sit. Yet on the flip side, I think back to seasons where I have been in true grief and maybe anguish or lament. And I don't necessarily remember the words that people said to me, but I do remember who, who was there. Right. That's I remember good. who was present. And if that's one thing that Jesus is, is always present. Yeah. So good. And maybe yeah. that... that I'm processing that right now. How we how we abide with people. Maybe yeah. it's not the words. It's just be present. And in being present, we are being Jesus' hands and feet in that moment. Yeah. That's really good. There are a uh, couple books that came to my mind. Ooh, um nice. in regard to like pain and suffering too. So one of them, Sean, C. S. Lewis. Ah, the problem of pain. Sorry, I just stole that from you. No, bit. it was a handoff. Oh, sweet. Yeah, The Problem of Pain. It's been a while since I've read it, but I reference it often. C.S. Lewis does a fantastic job of just not necessarily explaining pain or explaining it away, but talking about how pain is actually an indicator that we are a, whole, a, a people that are, are made for more mm-hmm. than just this life. And points to Jesus and how we enter into the pain of one another and even into our own. Um, and so uh, he does a great job with that yeah. book. Another one he writes as uh, Grief Observed. Yes. And it's walking through his own kind of journey through losing his wife. Right. And uh, it's another great one. D.A. Carson, it's actually one I've skimmed through. I haven't read yet. I'm going to read it in the next uh, week and a half or so. But uh, it is called How Long, O Lord? And it's reflections on on suffering and evil in the world. Timothy Keller also writes one, Walking with God Through Pain and Suffering. And so that one's a a little bigger. (laughs) It's a little bit more work. But there are just some good references or maybe some good books. If you are listening and you want to continue on this conversation, what I love about all of them is in some way, Timothy Keller's title captures it the most, but they're about walking with God through that suffering and that lamenting and that grieving. God is not absent. He is with us in the midst and walking alongside us, and we can learn how to do that with him. So, dude, g- great topic. Yeah. Great questions, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for inviting me on. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah. This is, I mean, this is what it's all about, right? Right. Uh, Welcome to the table. <laughs> different perspectives and, and coming together and just having these conversations. As As we always say, we're all doing life here for the first time, but we're all trying to grow in our relationship with Jesus, be be more faithful followers of him, navigate the uncertainty and just the the confusion that can be our world. So I, we hope this conversation has been helpful uh, yeah. to you. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We'll also put some of those books in the show notes yep. that uh, Khalil and I mentioned. And uh, until next time, thanks for listening.
and who are you inviting to your table?